This podcast is brought to you by Amicus Attorney, developers of legal practice management software. Let Amicus help you run your practice so you can focus on what you do best, practice law. Visit amicusattorney.com and get started today. Welcome to this special edition of the ABA Journal's Asked and Answered. I am your host, Lee Rawls, and today I'm here with Sondra Brown, who's the manager of the Disaster Response Unit for Lone Star Legal Aid. Sondra, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Thank you for having us. First off, uh, I'd like to check in with you. Um, what's what's the storm been like for you? Are you in a safe place? Uh, I know that the Houston office um, of Lone Star Legal Aid just had an explosion and a fire. What What's happening with uh, you and your crew? Well, we're working remotely right now, as you can imagine, because many of us had to evacuate to other places, to other offices for Lone Star Legal Aid, because we have many offices. Um, we cover the eastern third of the state of Texas. So just as an example, um, part of our senior management evacuated to our Texarkana office, and they're working out of that office. Um, those of us that are still in the greater Houston area that are obviously um, unable to work in our main office are working remotely on um, laptop computers, pads, phones, wherever we are. But we're continuing to work. Uh, Legal Aid has transferred to a new web page. And um, we're just hanging in there and doing what we can and getting ready for the immediate disaster to subside. So we'll be able to do some outreach and get out in the world and try to help people. So we're thinking of two different audiences as we speak to you. One is uh, the lawyers who are all across America who want to know how they can help. And the other are the people who are caught up in this disaster. Let's let's address them first. What are the most immediate um, needs and concerns for the people in the path of Hurricane Harvey and, the, and this disaster in the in the next few weeks, let's say? What are their immediate legal needs? Um, you're going to see the beginning of the FEMA denials, and there will be a need to do FEMA disaster appeals um, to enable people to receive some temporary housing, to enable them to get replacement of, for example, transportation, personal property, to get monies for um, needed repairs to their homes. That's the first thing that you'll see, along with insurance claims issues. Uh, people are filing in the greater Houston area. There's a lot of flood insurance claims being filed, and that's the Lone Star Legal Aid area. Toward Corpus Christi and lower down the coast where Harvey made landfall, that area is covered by the legal aid known as Texas Rio Grande Legal Aid, and those people will be addressing insurance issues relating to homeowners and wind coverage. So it's still going to be insurance issues. It's just uh, slightly different types. So that's the most immediate need. And then, of course, uh, they'll be getting children back in school. Sometimes school districts are not um, educated as well as they should be, and they'll try to deny students being readmitted without all their paperwork, which, of course, after a disaster of this magnitude is an impossibility. So we'll be there. Now, there are a lot of rumors flying, and I'm in Illinois, and I'm still seeing a lot, and they range from you know, oh, don't go to the shelters because they'll be checking immigration status, which the city of Houston put out, um, you know, tweets saying that's that's not true. We're not checking immigration status. So there are, you know, rumors like that to uh, one that I saw that it may be true. And I, and I have no way of knowing that there is a September 1st deadline that you need to file paperwork before this or else your insurance claim can't receive the same level of attention. How do you address this flurry of information in the age of social media and the age of um, just really widely available ways to spread misinformation? We are sending out information through Twitter, through Facebook, and discussing it and letting people know. We're very aware of the September 1 deadline, but that will not impact the flood insurance because that's national flood insurance program and it has its own act and laws. 
um, that does have an impact on insurance policies in the state of Texas, homeowners policies, and the wind insurance policies. There is a new law in effect. The September 1 deadline affects one part of that. It's just about getting your claim in by September 1st. Not your completed proof of loss, not all your documentation. Get your claim in and have a claim number. And that will um, make the old penalties, and this is only um, with regard to the penalties being um, 18% under the old law and 10% under the new law. Um, this new law will have um, more burdens on the homeowner if they want to go th- forward with a lawsuit um, with regard to damages for um, improper handling of their claim or improper denial of their claim. Um, But that's a completely different animal. Um, The September 1 deadline is just about getting your claim on file, and then that affects the interest rate, the punitive interest rate, should the court find damages. So it's an awful lot of ifs, but, you know, it's... Unfortunately, exaggeration of facts can happen. Um, so we'll count on the media to help publicize that. Um, the bar is aware of it. They've got it up about the new changes in the laws. And we're addressing that issue. So I have a list of some of the disasters that you've been called upon to address in your career. And they include things like Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Rita, Hurricane Ike, the the West explosion that happened in Texas, um, the wildfires in 2011, the BP oil spill. Yes, ma'am. What are some things that are in common with what you're seeing now? And, and is there any way in which this hurricane is unique? Is it too early to tell? I think this is going to be a very large disaster and require a very large disaster response from the legal community. And, you know, I'm proud to say I live in Houston and the state of Texas and Houston pride themselves on getting things done. So it's going to be a large response and it's going to be a holistic response. It's going to be legal aid. It's going to be local bar associations. It's going to be the state bar. It's going to be other people having permission to assist people here. And I'm proud that everyone's going to step up and try to be there to help. We'll do the very best job we can. And let's talk about that a little. I know that there are rumors that the Texas Supreme Court is trying to work out uh, ways that lawyers from other states can come and help provide pro bono um, assistance for, for Texans. How can lawyers be helping both in the immediate aftermath and then, you know, of course, this will be an issue for months and years. Uh, How can people who want to help Hurricane Harvey victims be doing so from wherever they are? Well, we would need the permission to be granted first. Um, And that was done after Hurricane Katrina. So um, if that happens, then more people would be able to assist. And there are many things that could be done remotely in the age of phones and internet. Um, People can be helped remotely. Uh, there's going to be a lot of need for FEMA appeals, which, you know, is administrative, and you honestly don't even need to be a lawyer to help someone do an administrative FEMA appeal. Um, it's a lot better if you have a lawyer, right? Um, we're very successful with those often, and that's the kind of thing that people could do. Uh, obviously, people could not assist out of state. Uh, with going into uh, an eviction hearing, for example, if there was a wrongful eviction. Obviously, you need people closer, but there are going to be ways we hope that people can help. Sandra, uh, if people want to reach out directly to help you at Lone Star Legal Aid and find out more about uh, what you're doing, where can they go? Um, we've got a new web page up and running at lonestarlegal.wordpress.com. And you can reach out to us there. Okay. And we also have a Facebook page. And and a Twitter, too, if people are looking for that. I've, I've been poking around on it, and that's Lstar Legal on Twitter. 
uh, that's that's up and running. I believe that you guys also have a national website just talking about disaster legal aid resources. And that is at disasterlegalaid.org. What kind of things can people find there? That's the website that I've been the content coordinator of since 2012. And there's three audiences that the disasterlegalaid.org um, webpage is geared toward. Um, it's for individuals that need legal help. And it's also for the legal aid attorneys and other attorneys that are responding to a disaster. And it's also a portal for pro bono attorneys to contact and reach out. The Texas Hurricane Harvey page, if you go to the upper right-hand side, for more info, you'll see a page that's dedicated to Hurricane Harvey, and it has information there. This is also uh, mobile-friendly, so attorneys can use it by going out in the field. And if you want to check, for example, the CFR for the Individual and Households Program, you can just navigate on it on your phone. You can have the resources in your pocket to respond to the immediate need. And I know that there are people all across the country with loved ones in Houston. Is this the kind of page that they should be directing their loved ones too, that they could find immediate help? No. Um, just for the legal help, uh, yes, but not for the rescue help. We're having people put re rescue requests in some unusual places. Um, yes, this page references the disaster hotline. This is the ABA, YLD, Disaster Legal Service Hotline for the state of Texas. It's run by the State Bar of Texas. And it's answered by the local legal aides. So, for example, in the eastern third of the state, it's generally answered by Lone Star Legal Aid. And down by Corpus Christi, it's going to be answered by Texas Rio Grande Legal Aid. That number is 1-800-504-7030-7030, last four digits. And that's the Texas Disaster Legal Aid hotline number for individuals to call to get legal information, advice, and help. And Sandra, just as a last question, um, obviously we won't know the full scope of the disaster until the waters can recede, but what are going to be some of the longer term, not the immediate legal needs and, and considerations that you guys are concerned about and looking into? Well, obviously, these legal needs are going to change over time. So right now, we're trying to publicize to prevent contractor fraud because it's very hard to address after the fact. So we're trying to get that information out, all the do's and don'ts of um, water remediation and uh, home repair contractors. And then over time, it's going to segue after the FEMA appeals, after the immediate landlord-tenant loss documents education issues, then it's going to segue into some longer-term issues such as landlords not wanting to repair damaged properties. Um, when the community development block grants come online, we'll be helping people with that process and those appeals. Um, there's always some types of um, airship property in Texas, so we'll be addressing some of the ownership issues. And essentially, the most important thing to know is that the need, legal and otherwise, is going to continue for a long, long time. Just to give you an example, I was running a title clearing project that only finished in February of this year, and that was relating to the CDBG grants going all the way back to Ike. So the recovery process, legal and otherwise, is going to continue for a really long time. Well, Sandra, thank you so much for taking the time out of what is a very busy day for you. Uh, we'll all be thinking about you. And um, hopefully that you and Lone Star Legal Aid will be getting the assistance that you need to be providing for the people of Houston and all the other areas in East Texas and Arkansas. Thank you so much for everything. So thank you again to Sondra Brown of Lone Star Legal Aid for joining us for this special edition of the ABA Journal's Asked and Answered. Up next, I'm going to be speaking with Andrew Van Single. He is the director of the Disaster Legal Services Program 
from the ABA Young Lawyers Division. But first, we're going to get a word from our sponsor. These days, law firms need to do more with less. Making this happen requires efficient, cost-effective tools that work the way you do. Available as a desktop or cloud solution, Amicus Attorney Practice Management Software improves the organization of your firm and drives your bottom line. Visit amicusattorney.com to discover how you can join the thousands of lawyers who rely on Amicus every day to run their practices. Welcome back to this special edition of the ABA Journal's Asked and Answered. We are going to now be speaking with Andrew Van Singel. He's the director of the Disaster Legal Services Program from the ABA Young Lawyers Division. And we're going to join our conversation already in progress now. Thank you for joining us for this special edition of the ABA Journal's Asked and Answered. I'm your host, Lee Rawls, here with Andrew Van Singel. He's the director of the Disaster Legal Services Program put on by the Young Lawyers Division of the ABA. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me today. First of all, could you let our listeners know a little bit about the program itself? How old is it? What kind of disasters have you responded to before? That sort of information. Sure. So the Young Lawyers Division has participated in the Disaster Legal Services Project for just about 45 years now. It started in the early 70s in response to Hurricane Camille. And we've been handling disasters. Um, I've been in this position for the past two years. And I I think in my time alone, we responded to over uh, 25 disasters during that time, ranging from all across the United States, even um, some outlying territories out in Saipan, for example. Uh, Most common types of uh, disasters that we're dealing with are uh, flooding and high winds, caused by hurricanes, such as the one that is going on right now in the Gulf Coast and in Houston. Also, last year, we responded to Hurricane Matthew and historic flooding in Baton Rouge. And South Carolina had their historic thousand-year flood. We also deal with uh, disasters such as wildfires. We responded to wildfires that were in Northern California, out in Butte County and Calaveras County along with some other types of incidents, such as uh, flooding across the Great Plains and even mudslides in uh, Washington and Kentucky. Now, Andrew, uh, as I understand it, you are about to leave for Houston yourself very shortly. Can you walk us through what kinds of things you will be doing when you arrive or that you've done in the past? What can you actually do on the ground in these early hours as, you know, the scope of the disaster is still being examined? So my plan right now is that I really don't have an agenda. I'm hoping to get that firmed up in the next couple of days here. And we want to be, you know, we want to be cautious that we're not, you know, getting in the way because right now the FEMA and Red Cross is, they're in response mode right now. They're, we're not towards uh, recovery. And the DLS program, we like to consider ourselves kind of the, the third responders. So we're going to uh, be deployed once people have their basic necessities and the floodwaters start to recede. And when those first responders go away, some of these legal claims are going to start to vest. So I've been in contact with the leadership within the Red Cross, and I kind of communicated that to them as well, that I don't have an agenda yet. I'm hoping to be able to do some publicity uh, and outreach for the DLS program, but I said I still have a strong back. So if you need me to do some heavy lifting, I'm more than happy to do that as well. So, Andrew, I'd like to ask you, um, in your personal background and your personal experience, uh, you are actually a tax lawyer. I think that there are many people out there listening who say, well, I don't know how I can take my own legal skills in my own practice area and really be able to help out in disaster situations. Um, What has been your experience in having a legal background that you don't necessarily connect when you think of, you know, disaster response, how have you been able to use your skills to help in these various disasters? Well, I started as a legal aid attorney back in 2011. So what I was dealing with even in running our tax clinic is that we're dealing with poverty law and a lot of the issues that disaster survivors um, are only worsened by people that are living in poverty. So I think that's my connection to it. And this program is done through a 
memorandum of understanding with uh, FEMA and the Legal Services Corporation, otherwise known as LSC. And LSC is the primary funder of most legal aid agencies across the country. So it's a natural fit to go uh, from a public interest attorney to uh, volunteering in a program like this. And to, to, to answer your question, really, there's a lot of different legal claims that are going to arise in the incident of a uh, or in the event of a disaster. Um, most common types of issues that we see are landlord tenant claims, something like the landlord is holding on to a security deposit, or maybe after the flooding, the landlord makes the, the property habitable again, but it's really not habitable. And what rights do the renter have uh, in terms of either breaking the lease or withholding rent. Um, it's going to be the first of the month soon. So people may have questions as to, you know, do I have to pay my rent? My, my house is flooded. They may have insurance claims. They may have rights under uh, to file under for FEMA benefits. They may have uh, other disaster unemployment benefits. They may have um, property issues. We see a lot of contractor fraud cases or other consumer issues and even tax issues. I mean, there's certain rights that are going to be um, available to taxpayers, uh, delayed uh, or deferred filing deadlines or penalty abatements uh, during times of disaster. So it really impacts a lot of different areas of law. And I think that's really why promoting this program is really important because a lot of people think of disaster recovery and they think of, you know, food and shelter and giving to programs like the American Red Cross, which is a very worthy cause, and we should definitely be giving our money there. But we should also be thinking about recovery, resilience, and the long-term road to recovery. So let's say I'm an ABA member. I'm interested in finding out more, finding out how I can participate or help. Where should I go to look up more information or get in contact with your group? There's a lot of different resources, and I've, I've been kind of bombarded with emails in the last couple of days with, uh, you know, attorneys and friends and colleagues from across the country, and they want to do something. And what I always tell them is, you know, be very realistic with what you think your commitment is, because a lot of these volunteers within the state of Texas, we're going to refer them to the state bar to be put on their volunteer registration and so we're going to have a huge influx of volunteer attorneys that want to uh, take part in this program. So we want to make sure that they're going to still be able to follow through uh, because it's going to be a challenge just to uh, kind of broker the legal needs of the disaster survivors with the volunteers. So I would say that as a preface to kind of know what your commitment is. Um, if you're out of state and you're not able to, and maybe you don't have the practice area expertise you know, consider donating to some of the legal aid agencies that are in the area, uh, agencies like Lone Star Legal Aid, Texas Rio Grande Legal Aid, Southeast Louisiana Legal Services. These are programs that, you know, we're doing only a small sliver of the legal work that's going to be done in these communities. And the long-term claims are going to be handled by these legal aid agencies. So I think that's one good way to uh, contribute. Um, I haven't had it confirmed yet, but there's rumors that as we speak, the Texas Supreme Court is issuing an order that is going to allow out-of-state attorneys or attorneys that are not licensed in Texas to work on uh, cases in Texas on a pro bono basis uh, if it's related to Hurricane Harvey. So we, again, we haven't had that confirmed yet. If that is uh, in fact true, um, then I would recommend people that have the, the practice area expertise or the ability to learn that practice area to sign up with the State Bar of Texas. And I believe their website is pretty simple uh, to get to the form. It's just texasbar.com forward slash volunteer attorney. Okay, Andrew. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us and good luck with your trip down to Houston. Um, is there anything else that you would like our listeners to know about or keep in mind? Um, there's, there's a lot of resources out there um, to kind of get acclimated to this area of law. If you're feeling uh, the need to, to help contribute, I think the best thing you can do is, you know, if you're in 
a state like Florida or the Carolinas or somewhere uh, throughout the rest of the country is get up to speed with how you would help in your own community. We're seeing an influx of disaster declarations. Um, like I said, in the last two years, just the ones that we've been involved with, um, probably 25 or 30 of them, and they're impacting areas that you, know, you wouldn't otherwise think of being prone to disasters. I mean, right now we're doing uh, implementation out in Michigan. We're currently doing one in West Virginia. So um, kind of get your own house in order and, and be ready to volunteer when that disaster comes to your state. And through the Young Lawyers Division, we have district representatives that cover uh, the entire U.S. So if you're interested, I would advise reaching out to your local district rep and um, having a, a meaningful conversation about what disaster legal services means in your own community. Well, thank you so much, Andrew, for joining us. Again, I've been talking with Andrew Van Singel of the Disaster Legal Services Program of the ABA's Young Lawyer Division. Thank you so much for joining us, Andrew, and thank you to our listeners for joining us for this special edition of the ABA Journal's Asked and Answered podcast. I've been your host, Lee Rawls.